In this video, we'll be looking at Chapter 8, Section J on standard deviations. Now, so far, when we've been talking about the spread of a data set, we've been using two different measurements. The first is the range, and the second is the interquartile range. And, but there's a problem with these two measures of the spread, and that is that they both rely on only two data points. And sometimes there can be some information hidden within the rest of the data points that's relative to the spread. So it would be good if we came up with a measure of spread that used all the data points. And we have one. It's called the standard deviation. And before we look at the standard deviation, we need to know what a deviation is. And a deviation is simply the difference between a data value and the mean of the data set. The deviation for a point really tells us how far away from the mean or the average of that point is of the data set. The standard deviation is a slightly more complicated equation. which is the average, essentially, of the individual deviations. And it's given by this equation here. Now, don't get too scared by all of the notation here. We, we really know all of the variables that have been given. We know x is the individual data point and we know x bar is the mean. Remember that sigma represents the sum of the deviations, but actually we're summing the square of the deviations, and we're dividing by n, which is the number of data points in the data set. And once we've done all of that, we take the square root to find the standard deviation. So to sum up, here are what the variables equal. So here's the equation for the standard deviation again. And it's important to note that this equation represents a sample standard deviation. And that's why we use the letter S to denote standard deviation in this case, because we're just looking at a sample, not the entire population. Now, we have a very similar equation for the standard deviation of an entire population, and that looks like this. And you'll notice, actually, this is the same equation, except we're using a, a few different terms, in that we only use these different terms to represent a population standard devi deviation. And this is where we're taking the standard deviation of all the samples in a data set, or, or all the elements of a population instead of only a sample. Notice that we use the letter sigma here instead of an S. This is the Greek letter sigma to represent the standard deviation. And we use the Greek letter mu to represent the mean of the population set. Now when you find these statistics using your calculator, you'll see that S and sigma are actually two different values. And that's because your calculator is using this equation to generate the sample standard deviation. Notice that we put a minus 1 here. And I won't really go into all of the complicated detail as to why you should put a minus 1 here technically to calculate the sample standard deviation. But just know that that's why you're getting two different numbers for sigma and s in your, in your calculator. Your textbook does not mention this fact and assumes that these two are the same, and that the only difference is one is for a sample and one is for an entire population. Um, so for the problems in our textbook, we should always be using sigma in our calculator. Let's take a look at our first example problem. We have a, a grocery chain that purchases oranges from two different wholesalers. They take five random samples 
of 40 oranges to examine them for skin, skin blemishes. And here's the data below. So, for example, in the first random sample for wholesaler Sunblast, there were four blemished oranges. In the second sample, there were 16 blemished oranges. In the third sample, 14, and so on and so on. And we have the same data for the second wholesaler, Valencia Star. So we're asked to find the mean and standard deviation for each data set to help us compare the two wholesale suppliers. So let's take a look at our first wholesaler, Sunblessed. And the first thing we're going to do is calculate the mean, which is x bar. And remember, that's just the sum of all the data values divided by the sample size. So if I were to add up these five numbers, I would get 50. And I divide by 5, which is the number of data points, I get 10. So our mean is 10 for Sunblessed. Now remember, for the standard deviation, we're going to use this equation. And it's helpful to generate a table to calculate these values if we're going to do it by hand. And I'll show you how to do it by calculator in class, but you should see how it's generated first. So here we're going to have our variable x, or all our variables, in this column, which are 4, 16, 14, 8, and 8. And in the next column, we're going to have x minus x bar. So we're going to calculate the deviation, just the single deviation for each data point first. And so we needed to know the mean, the mean first. The mean was 10. So using that, I get 4 minus 10 equals negative 6. I get 16 minus 10 equals positive 6. And you can do the rest. Now remember in the standard deviation equation we are squaring these, ver these uh, deviations first before we sum them. So the next step is to square the deviations. And negative 6 squared is 36, 6 squared is 36, and all the way down the column. We can add up the totals here. We already knew that the first column should add up to 50. And if we add up the last column, that's the number we're really interested in. That's 96. And so that number goes up here. This is the sum of the squares of the deviations, which is the numerator of our expression right here. So standard deviation now becomes the square root of 96 over the sample size, which is 5. And if we plug that in our calculator, we get approximately 4.38. So the mean of the data points for Sunblessed is 10, and the standard deviation for the Sunblessed samples is 4.38. Now we're going to look at the Valencia star samples. And it's the exact same process. So first I need the mean, which is going to be 55 divided by 5, which equals 11. And then for the standard deviation, I need a table. And I'm going to put in the data values, which are 9, 12, 11, 10, and 13. And remember, I'm going to calculate the single deviations next. And that is each data value subtracting the mean. So I get minus 2 here, 1, 0, negative 1, 2. And then I'm going to square those deviations and add them up. So here's, here are the squares, 
and then the total is 10. So the standard deviation for Valencia's star is this number right here divided by the sample size, which is 5, and we take the square root, and we get approximately 1.41. So remember, for the, the other wholesaler, we had a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of approximately 4.38. And what this tells us is that on average, using the means, on average, Valencia Star supplied oranges with more blemishes, right? But there was less variability, less variability in the data. And that's really what the standard deviation is telling us. There's less variability. So while on average there was, there was one more blemish, the overall sample sizes were less variable than the sun-blessed wholesaler.